Hello everyone, welcome to Valley Homes on TV. I'm Todd Glesner, here along with Debbie G and Dehar Hi Todd, how are you? I'm doing great, Debbie, great to see you. Great to see you too. Very glad folks have tuned in to our show today. To, and, and on uh, they what, can watch us on Channel 26. That's on correct. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6.30 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday at 9 a.m. And I think I'll, I'll, they spot us in some other times too. And we can catch our best of. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> well, we're glad you, you've joined us today where we get a chance to introduce you to folks in and, um, and places around Milpitas. And we've got a special guest today. And Debbie, do you care to introduce our, our guest today? I'd love to. Uh, Renee's a, been a friend of mine and a colleague. We've worked together for many, many years. Mm -hmm. She's here from the city of Milpitas. It's Renee Lorenzen. Great. Awesome. Renee, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Great. Well, we need to start and uh, give us a little bit about your background, your history, where you grew up. You, know, you work here for the city. Mm -hmm. Did you grow up here in town? I did. I actually born here in Milpitas, went through the public school system in high school, um, and took part in the recreation programs and the facilities that are still here today. And uh, coming full circle, I'm now the uh, interim recreation manager for the nice. city of Milpitas. That's exciting. So, yeah, now I get to oversee the sites and the programs that, you know, I once played in and was able to take a part in. So, so you were locally educated with the Milpitas yeah. schools and yeah. then at college? Or? Went to um, uh, Cal State Hayward. Okay. And majored in human development because I love working with people. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Terrific. Yeah. So, so now you, um, you manage you to run your parks and recreation department. The recreation, yes. Yeah. Right. Terrific. So there's, there's separate departments. They parks are separate and recreation. now, actually. Parks is with our public works. Okay. And uh, recreation is uh, on our own. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit more than about, about what that recreation had then. What, what is it that you deal with in terms of the recreation department? So recreation, I guess the simplest way to put it, is that recreation has three centers, our community, sports, and senior center. And we serve uh, the public, Milpitas uh, residents and non-residents that come in because they love our programs, mm. deal from uh, pre-K up to uh, seniors. I think one of our members right now is 92. So um, we have something for everybody. Sure, You've been with the city how many years? Uh, gosh, I started at 15 out uh, in the camps. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think you had one of my kids. Too. I did. Yeah. I actually worked to them for some time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I uh, started there and working with the kids and, and playing. And then uh, this was a great uh, college job and became permanent my senior in college. So oh, really? I've worked at all three sites in varying capacities and just happy to lead lead the team now. Terrific, mm -hmm. terrific. So, um, you know, you get a chance really then, you've, you've experienced a lot of it firsthand, you get a chance to get to know and work with yes. a lot of folks around town. Yes, a lot. Um, tell us a little bit about, you know, what are some of the, the things that you enjoy most about working in recreation? I just, I love people. Uh -huh. I think they're interesting, I think they're fun. Uh, I like the feeling when uh, they get the class that they want or, you know, they've got a problem and we can help solve it, um, you know, with just excellent customer service. I, I love people. I, I love that feeling. And I love uh, being knowledgeable about the city that I grew up in and that I work for. There's mm -hmm. just that uh, institutional history that um, I think is priceless. So Okay, well, it. let's, uh, the folks out there are mm -hmm. kind of interested in what programs, yeah. services, mm -hmm. let's kind of run, make a run through okay. of what, what is all entailed. So I think we'll start with our younger groups. Okay. We've got pre-K, so our little toddlers uh, and their parents can come out and do music and, and movement and, uh, you know, work with balls and music and things like that and get their, get their spirits and their bodies moving. Mm -hmm. We also offer um, after-school programs. So when your kids get out of school, they're safe. They play, they do homework, so they're with the us. Bell after the Bell Program, and we're at um, about half of the sites right now, uh, nice. Milpitas Unified Schools. Well, that's a real need that's being It's filled. great, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we have programs for the teens, driver's ed, art, history, SAT prep. It runs the gamut. Uh, and then for our adults, we do uh, the sports center really kicks in. So we have a big fitness program, yoga, weight training, aqua aerobics, lap swimming, you know, keep them fit and then keep their minds fit with Ikebana and, uh, you know, some driver's training as well if they need it again in the in later <laughs> years. Um, and just, uh, you know, just enrichment classes for adults. And for our seniors, we have an entire center. We offer a nutrition program for lunch. Um, there's ping pong, pool table. Bingo. Yeah, yes. bingo. Yes. 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 Bingo. Trips out to, uh, you know, Fisherman's Wharf and uh, Treasure Island. 
Um, and then, and also just a place to be. So they mm-hmm. leave their houses, they have somewhere to go. They're they're with their peers. They have a great time, and they get to go home at the end of the day. So mm-hmm. that's a long mm-hmm. example. Good. Good. <laughs> what about sports leagues? Is recreation involved with sports leagues as well? The sports leagues we support them by organizing which fields they get to play on. There's okay. a lot of uh, great kids. Uh, in uh, many sport leagues, soccer, football, baseball. So we, we help them with the getting them all organized and make sure that they have fields to play on. All right. Yeah. So um, what do you find, um, let's skip around a little bit. Yeah. Todd already yeah. put in yeah. the positive. Yeah. What do you find is some challenges that you have? Oh, changing demographic, mm-hmm. very different. Um, we see just kind of a lot of our, my staff have been there a long time. We've seen some ebbs and flows. And I think what's coming in now um, are... The younger, uh, the younger adults who haven't had kids yet. How do we serve them? How do we wow. how do we outreach to them? And the other one is, um, you know, more transit uh, residencies and condensed housings. How do we get them uh, to us or get to them and help them build a community in their in their condominium or their apartment um, housing? It's not just a single homes like that. So, but we we try new things. Some of them are great. Some of them don't work. And we go back to the drawing board and see how we can better serve the community. Good. Well, you talked about classes and Mm -hmm. and programs and those sort of things. Is there a place that that folks might be able to find that information easily? You have like a website Mm -hmm. or is there... Uh, brochure that comes out. I mean, mm-hmm. how, how do, if folks want to find out about those sort of things, what's question. the best place yeah. to do that? There's two great places. Number one is the City of Milpitas' website. It's a great resource for and every actually, department. We will be able to put that up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, City of Milpitas, on the homepage, there's a recreation tab. You click on it. It'll take you to um, everything that we offer, all of our sites, all the amenities, how to run a facility, how to register for a class. Online, too, is our catalog. It comes out three times a year. Mm -hmm. It lists all the classes, and you can enroll right there online. Or if you want to hold that book, they're available all the time at all of our three centers. Okay, great. Terrific. Let's talk about um, some of the events. Uh, Mm. The city recently went through a 60th anniversary event, and that was really exciting. Tell us about how you planned that and how that came together and... What were the benefits for that for the community? Wow, the 60th anniversary was huge. That was an undertaking. There were several components to it. Um, Just for myself was getting a theme together, just getting the colors, getting the community excited, um, and then also the public art component. We put uh, the Minuteman out in front of City Hall as part of the the, the gala kickoff night. Um, We really wanted to make it um, classy and special and something that our community would remember for a lifetime. And so we really felt like we we hit the mark, and, and everyone that went to the open, gala mm-hmm. night. It was open to the public. It was open to the public. Mm-hmm. Um, nice. It was no charge. It was mm-hmm. free to the community. There was entertainment. Um, I actually had a friend who also grew up in Milpitas who's been on Broadway. He came and sang for everybody. Uh, that was a nice uh, treat, the local, uh, local hero, you know, Boy done good. Nah. Um, and, and there uh, was a video yeah. put together of some yes, history yes. in the city. That was yeah. co- how'd that happen? Um, Eller and Passion, who's uh, with our information. I think services. I know that guy. Yeah. yeah, I think he's on the other side so of the <laughs> these cameras right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, super talented. Uh, he went through and got uh, did several interviews with um, our community members, historical photos. He did so much research and put so much time into that, and it really gave uh, a, a good timeline, a great uh, snapshot of where Mopita started and where we are now. And we carried that theme through the whole year. Really proud of it. Now, there have been some new events uh, as well, I understand, like uh, the Veterans Car Show. Has has Uh, Recreation Services been involved with that? Recreation did help with the car show. Uh That's the Veterans Commission's Mm -hmm. event. Um, Last year was the first year. We pulled that off. It was a huge success. Over 100 cars we filled the first year. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. We saw a couple into hard cars there as yeah, well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, and they raised, uh, you know, about $4,000 uh, mm-hmm. in that one day. And uh, they were able to donate a portion of that to uh, the Fisher House. It was a great event, beautiful event. And it was special because it was an event that was made for adults, their cars. And, and kids kind of came along. But it was, it was great. It was new, different. We loved it. We had it this year. Equally as successful, different mm-hmm. cars, great crowd. Well, let's see. You time. you work with the Veterans Commission. I, think, I, I just I, on I, that. Yeah, just on this. On yeah. That. yeah, and then you work with uh, what other? Do you work uh, Parks and Recs? I've sat on Parks and Recs with mm-hmm. them a okay. little bit. 
Um, but my main one is the Arts Commission. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's go talk about yeah. the arts. Yeah. What's going on with the arts? Well, we are working on some public art projects right now. We're going to put uh, a new piece in front of the police station. In doing some research, we found out that our police station or our police department has one of the oldest canine programs on the West Coast. Sure. So we're, we want to highlight that with a piece of art out in front of their building. Um, we also have a great Phantom Art Gallery. Uh, artists can come and hang their work. Um, and sell it and have a great exhibit. Where is that located? If There's folks want to two locations, it. actually. There's one at the community center and at the library. We And the Arts Commission juries for both. Uh, it's very popular. There is a waiting list of about two years. But, you know, come on in if you're interested and, and fill an application. And I know you featured some yeah. local artists, too. It's oh, yes. It's really exciting. A lot of... Um, well, you, well you, you talked about you know you, you're looking at a process for, for putting a piece in front of like the police department. Mm -hmm. What's the, the process that, you, that the arts commission goes through in terms of selecting you know pieces mm -hmm. that, that might be public art and are there opportunities for people in the public to have input into that? Yeah, every commission meeting is open to the public. Okay. We encourage community participation and engagement. It, mm -hmm. It's great when the community gets involved uh, from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. So for the Arts Commission, once they identify an area in Milpitas that they think needs a piece of public mm -hmm. art, we put a call out to artists. Tell us what you think you would do in this spot. Um, we go out to that community or that neighborhood. What do you guys want? Mm -hmm. You want something that's colorful, interactive. We get ideas from the neighborhood and the community. When all that information goes out, we get some really cool feedback from artists that drop what they would put in the parks, what they would put on the fields or in front of buildings. And then after that, we pick our favorites, or they pick their favorites. Yeah. I don't have anything to do with that. <laughs> they pick their favorites, and then uh, they build 3D models. Mm -hmm. Logos out to the community. They're looked at. They're discussed. They're voted on by the community. And mm -hmm. then we take that information to the city council and say, hey, mm -hmm. what do you want us to put out there? And we've made some great great placements over the last couple of years. Well, Renee, you've mm -hmm. made, th this uh, This is a job, but it's more than that. <laughs> yeah. it, it's a lifestyle for it you. Is. It's a life and a mm -hmm. career, yeah. long-term yeah. career. What do you find are the real rewards? Um, the real rewards are just seeing what I've been able to do for the community when I drive around. I see a great building. Um, I see a 20-foot minute man standing yeah. out in front of our city hall. Wow, I can point out mm -hmm. to my kids, you know, mommy had something to do with that. And that's really, really rewarding. And then okay. just seeing the smiles on the faces uh -huh. of the people that are on town. Nice. It's great. Good. So, you know, the position union is a, is a <laughs> relatively recent development for you. Mm, yes. Yeah. Uh, so I think September 1st yeah. uh, I started. Great. What, what sort of plans or ambition do you have career-wise then? Do you stay here <sighs> in Milpitas your entire career? Or? Yeah, mm -hmm. we call them lifers, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I never close a door or a window. Um, I love this town. Um, I would love to stay here and, and see where it goes for the next, you know, 20 years and, and uh, raise mm -hmm. my family around here and just be a part of it all. I think that would be wonderful. I'd love that. Great. Yeah. Well, we are lucky to have you. Thank you. And we'll Happy get you day. back next year and yes. give the folks an update on where, oh, Christmas tree lighting oh, yes. Yes. is coming up. Yes. Um, like we're ending our 60th anniversary year here in January, um, but our last big event in that calendar year is our annual tree lighting. It's our 27th year doing it. So it's Monday, December 1st at 7 p.m. It's here in the Civic Center Plaza, right in the outdoor area between City Hall, Community Center, and Senior Center. Um, we have a great uh, play. Charlie Brown is seeking the meaning of the holiday, so you can see him try and figure that out. Um, and then we have a special visitor coming to help light the tree. And there'll be uh, cultural dancing, giveaways, refreshments. It'll be an event. awesome time. We want everyone to come out and celebrate with us. Terrific. Well, we hope folks will come out and, yeah. and join that and uh, join you and, and other yes. folks uh, in enjoying living here in Milpitas because yeah. we've got a lot to offer. We do. We have a lot. We want, we want them to play with us. <laughs> thank you for coming, thank visiting, you for having and me. sharing. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. The following is a public service announcement test to determine if you need a fishing license and boat registration before you head out on the water. Let us begin. Are you a pelican? Uh. Does this look like your house? Is this your idea of fishing with friends? Do you use your feet as fishing hooks? 
Are you your own boat? Do you have webbed feet? No, I mean like a... Uh, that's the one. Do you want this in your favorite lake? It. Yuck. Yike. No thanks, mister. Regardless how you answer, you need to be licensed and registered because it helps local conservation efforts protect the very natural resources you enjoy boating and fishing in for generations to come. Do your part at TakeMeFishing.org. We are the rise to every challenge type. The nothing is impossible type. The type that knows the time will come when we put type one behind us. We're the plan for a cure type. The improved life along the way type. The type that will stop at nothing until type one becomes type none. Can I go to the sleepover? Lucy, I want you to promise me something. If there's any drinking, I want you to say, no thanks, not my thing. Mom. I promise you, your real friends won't care. Deal? I promise, Mom. They really do hear you. Did you pack your toothbrush? For tips on how to start the talk, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. A public service message from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. All of us want to make a difference. As veterans, we committed to protect our country. We served and sacrificed for the things that mattered most. Those experiences shaped our lives, even if it isn't always obvious to those around us. And now that we've served, our commitments have taken on a new meaning. We're husbands, wives, parents, friends, and neighbors. But sometimes we still feel alone. We forget that our biggest challenge can be to ask for support when we need it. The Veterans Crisis Line is here for all veterans, service members, and their loved ones. Dial 1-800-273-8255 and press 1. Chat online at veteranscrisisline.net or text 838-255. It matters. Welcome back, everyone. Um, Todd Fuesner here with Debbie and her Giordano, and um, we're going to talk a little bit about what's been going on in the real estate world here yes. recently. Yes, um, recently got some information from the National Association of Realtors. One of uh, my colleagues had attended the national meeting and brought back some interesting stats, and I'll be happy to share that with you. Oh, terrific! Okay, um, although th this is a national, these are national numbers, and local numbers do vary a little bit, but. Uh, uh, generally, 70% of those ex surveyed expect real estate business to increase next year. Builder confidence is up. Consumer confidence is up. Maybe you'll agree with some of these things. Mm -hmm. Pending and existing sales of homes are a little bit shorter than they were in 2013. I thought this was an interesting, this is a national number. The Federal Reserve Bank estimates the national uh, average net worth of a renter at $5,500 and the average net worth of a homeowner of 195000 So home ownership pays off. Certainly does. Um, renters are facing higher rent prices. We've certainly seen that in the Valley here recently. First-time home buyers are beginning to shrink um, in terms of their numbers. 75% of the Gen Y population still believe home ownership is important. I think that's cool. Uh, gross domestic product will remain below 3%. Interest rates are predicted, and maybe you'll concur with this, to be about 4.5% by the end of 2015. Actually, that's a typo. It's 4.9%. Um, rents are rising by 3% per year. Household net worth is at an all-time high. And future population birth rates are falling. Legal Im immigration will create a boom. And the median price growth is at 4% annual. That's a national average. I think we're seeing a little bit higher that in all talk about the, the growth in the numbers after you talk about interest rates. So, right, again, so yeah, some interesting things there. Yeah, and I think that we're, yeah, we, we are seeing some expansion in the economy at, at this point in time, and that, of course, then spills over into real estate. And a lot of times real estate is on the leading edge of some of those indicators of what, what people are experiencing in their pocketbook. So where are we at today with interest rates? Interest rates are, are still fantastic. We're in the low fours. 
um, four percent for a 30-year fixed uh, up to four hundred seventeen thousand dollars, and just slightly higher for the uh, high balance conforming six twenty-five. You can actually get a jumbo loan today, 30-year jumbo loan, up to two million dollars at four percent. Well, and you, so, you that need the two million with the yeah. way the home prices are going, but. Yeah, yeah and so that, one of the things, nice. I, but one of the things I am starting to see is some loosening up in the jumbo financing arena. Um, you know, the the underwriting is still looked at real, real closely, um, but we're starting to see some expansion in in jumbo programs. And so, uh, for instance, that two million dollar loan, you can get into that with as little as twenty percent. Um, that had been very restricted before, uh, been restricted up to about a million dollars with 20% down. Anything over that would take 25 or 30% down. So we're starting to see some restrict, some Why loosening. Why is that? Why is that? Lo what, what caused the loosening up? Well, I, I think that um, what investors have seen and what banks have seen is, is the folks who have the capacity to, to have that sort of loan amount the performance of those loans in their portfolio has been very good. And so they, they have that history, they're tracking that, and so um, they were able to expand those guidelines a, a little bit. Uh, for instance, we now have a loan 15% um, down up to a million and a half dollars. Nice. And so you know, that's an example of how that's starting to loosen up now. Okay. So uh, that's, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. Um, anything... In, in the horizon, do you agree with the National Association of Realtors where the interest rates will rise a little bit more through well, next year? Well, yeah, I think that um, we'll probably see a little bit of an increase here in, in interest rates. That wouldn't be too much of a surprise. But I think it's going to be moderate. Um, I think our, our growth uh, outlook, you know, they talked about 3% GDP, which is moderate growth, which is going to keep um, maybe some moderate increase in interest rates. Um, the Federal Reserve Board has ended what they refer to as a quantitative easing or QE program. Um, and we've been kind of, I've been watching interest rates real closely with that, and we haven't seen rates go up yet as a result. Okay. Um, but they're also then now starting to signal that they're going to start to perhaps um, increase the prime rate, the short term interest rate policy. Um, and that may be coming up this spring. Okay, uh, and that should impact somewhat of the interest rates. Um, it'll, it'll impact the overall interest rate environment. Um, again, that short-term interest rate policy that the Fed has is not directly um, related to interest rates for home loans. It, it will be more in the global sort of uh, financial picture. Okay. And so it's one of those things that you know, the tide starts to rise a little bit as those interest rates go up, but you won't see a direct correlation one-to-one. -one. All right. Well, we certainly have had some price increases uh, year yeah. over year. Um, let me tell you what's going on Just in Melpias, the, the local market. And if you had a home and you owned it in October of 2013, you've had quite a bit of appreciation. Uh, Single-family homes were at 731000 uh, last year at this time. Median price was six hundred and eighty-two thousand. That has jumped now to seven hundred and eighty-two thousand for an average price, and median price of seven hundred and thirty-eight thousand. Well, and so that's, that's reflected in those NAR um, net worth numbers that you talked about. There. Absolutely, and uh, condos. Uh, it still continues to amaze me, even though we have so much overbuilding. Of uh, Renee even talked about the fact that uh, it's it, the community has changed in terms of housing and where people are living in, in close quarters. Right. Well, the, all the new development that's going on is, you know, packed in closer to transit, right? right? Much higher density, right? Right, right, right. And so it's just a, a change in... And, yeah. and these numbers, Todd, yeah. are, are resales, so they're okay. they're old, an they're older product. But mm -hmm. uh, last year, the uh, uh, condom uh, average median price, the median price was 454000 I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, average and medium are both the same, 454000 That's jumped to uh, average price of 517000 for uh, average and medium price is 540000 Isn't that so, incredible? Well, the, yeah, the percentage increase there in the condo market has been incredible. Uh, market is still good. Interest rates are good. Uh, open houses are heavily trafficked. Um, offers are coming in. They're trickling in. There's not a, the huge a demand of... You know, uh, 
the demand is there, but I think buyers are a little weary. They've searched all mm -hmm. year, and I think they're going to come back out in a few more months. Well, there's a seasonal impact to that somewhat so. as well. Um, you know, there tends to be that, that warm weather buying season, right? And as right. we enter more into the, the holidays, people's focus sometimes will shift. But, you know, uh, days on market is still excellent, and mm -hmm. uh, the, the market is still just incredible right now. So. Well, and... Yeah, you know, I've always told folks that you know during the holidays is not a bad time to be looking for a home. Not a bad time to be looking or selling a home. That's so. correct. Absolutely. Well, we're glad folks have joined in. If um, Thank you. they have questions about the show or oh yeah, they can um, email me at Giordano G I O R D A N O D J at AOL dot com and Todd, where can uh, you be reached? T Flesner at opusadvisors dot com and we'll get that up on the screen. Well, listen, you have a nice Thanksgiving with your family. Thank you. And uh, we'll tape one more show, and then we'll be off and running till, until 2015. Great. Happy Thanksgiving to you, and uh, happy holidays to everybody out there. Thank you.